It's the Daily Doug. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Daily Doug. I am thankful that you are here for what I think will be one of our more unique episodes. So this is episode 199. We're almost to 200 and uh, most of these episodes are music reaction and music education videos. And we've uh, taken a look at many different musicians, many types of music and many generations of popular music. But there is one particular uh, musician whose music I have shied away from because it's a little intimidating. And that musician is Frank Zappa. So for me, Zappa is a bit of an enigma. He's notorious. I've known of his work and sort of of his unique approach to making music and composing uh, for a long time, but I really don't know his repertoire. So there have been several people that have saying that have been saying, you know, you need to have some Zappa on the channel. I'm like, cool. What do I start with? <laughs> <laughs> right? Because that's always the difficult thing. You guys know a lot more about much of this music that I'm diving into than I do. So uh, when I get a suggestion for a brand new band, I'm like, sure, go into this. And everybody's like, no, you should have started with this one. And I'm like, well, what the hell? <laughs> right? So now that we have our Patreon, uh, I, I uh, took to our little uh, private Discord uh, last week and I said, y'all, uh, Zappa, I need an introductory piece for the channel. Help me out. And of course, just loads of, of suggestions poured in. And uh, it was a little overwhelming, but we, we um, sort of coalesced around one particular tune. And that tune is called Inca Roads. And that's one that we're going to do today. We're going to do Inca Roads by Frank Zappa and friends. So this song is from their uh, 1975 album, One Size Fits All. And I believe that the version that we're going to look at today uh, is uh, a live performance. So even, even better. I've spot checked it a little bit. Sounds interesting, y'all. Um, and the, the, uh, the sound quality uh, sounds really, really nice. Um, as we get ready for this, Frank Zappa is on guitar and vocals. Sadly, uh, he died in 1993 of cancer, so he's no longer with us. Uh, but uh, playing along with him, uh, George Duke on lead vocals. Surprising. I, and keyboards. I know George Duke as a keyboard player, uh, but he is taking the lead on vocals for this one. Uh, Napoleon Murphy Brock on flute, saxophone, and vocals. Tom Fowler on bass, Chester Thompson on drums, and Ruth Underwood on vibraphone, marimba, and uh, various types of percussion instruments. I'm a little nervous, but I uh, think we can do it. Are y'all ready for the Zappa train to, uh, to roll into town? I think we are. This is Inca Roads by Frank Zappa. Let's do it. Oh, thankfully, they're starting on the note that I had ear trained. <laughs> That's a C. Makes it a little bit easier to jump into the pool. Look at those instruments. It's like a time warp. C. G. G. It's a lovely chord. Sounds like D major over the top of that C chord. Did a vehicle come from somewhere out there? Just down in the Andes. Was it round and did it have a motor? Or was it something different? Okay, that's interesting. Whoa! What? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I gotta. I think I gotta change my swimsuit here and dive back in. Uh, y'all. Um. The, the lyrics at the beginning, 
Did a vehicle come from somewhere out there just to land in the Andes? Was it round and did it have a motor or was it something different? Uh, they're talking about uh, space invaders, <laughs> right? Uh, Andes, are they talking about Machu Picchu, the, uh, uh, the Nazca lines? Um, huh, and that was really interesting how um, they went to the spoken word section and and zap is over there conducting like that is metered measured music it's just sprechstem a spoken uh, word <sighs> holy buckets okay off we go there's a high d i keep hearing a high d and a low c Did it find a place to park itself? Or did, it, or did someone build a place to leave a space for such a thing to land? This is amazing, beautiful, and odd. Unconventional. All at the same time. into a solo section. coming out of that guy's forehead. Um, I think I'm going to need something a little stronger than coffee <laughs> to fully appreciate this. But uh, on we go. Here we go. That is slightly disturbing. But I want to keep watching. Claymation Zappa. I've never seen or heard anything like this. What is that? Are you watching this? technology of doing all of this sort of editing and visuals in the mid-70s is uh, quite impressive. For the solo, it seems like they're just going back and forth between like a C major 7, C major 9 chord and a D major chord. Just kind of back and forth and grooving on that. But the visuals here are freaking me out a bit, y'all. I would ask what the meaning is. I'm not sure what his point is or if there even is a point. If you are a Zappa aficionado and you know, uh, let us know. seen Frank play. <laughs> George is having a good time. Here we go. Based on his thumb. His thumb is eating his other finger.
bitonal between a D major over the top of a C major chord. They seem to be soloing like in the D major uh, collection, and then the harmonic palette is a step lower in C throughout this long solo. Flute and pitch percussion uh, is really a great um, combination. Okay. Did a vehicle come from somewhere out there? Did a vehicle come from somewhere out there? Did the Indians first on the bill carve up the hill? Was it Jack and Jill? Was it Phil or Bill? I don't know. It's, <laughs> uh, I think he's not taking himself too seriously. And I also think that they're kind of taking a punch or a jab at some of the other prog songs of that generation that were kind of into mysticism and spirituality. And he's kind of like saying, uh, y'all get over yourselves a little bit. Um, am I wrong? I'm not sure. Uh, let me know. Uh, we're going to keep rolling. The musicianship is unbelievable, by the way. I'm sure that every single bit of this is charted for these players to play later that night. Something's happening, I can't even tell what. Boy, the ensemble cohesion is on point, y'all. These uh, changing meters really complicated uh, voices. It's really excellent. Good, it, George. Sounds like free jazz a little bit. Wow. Frank's enjoying himself. I am too. Y'all, this is one of the more unique things I've ever heard. Okay. Well, I think I have officially be been uh, zapped. 
y'all, because um, I can't unhear that <laughs> or unexperience that. What a cool, cool piece of music that was, and a, a just unbelievable performance. Holy crap. Uh, let me talk about the percussionist for a second. Ruth uh, is a monster on that uh, pitched percussion. And I uh, was very impressed by her prowess on that. And when we write for percussionists in a, in a, uh, in a classical or sort of a, a stage setting, a lot of times we have to tell them um, all the instruments that they're going to play. There's a lot of English or a lot of uh, language that's in these scores for percussionists instead of just uh, saying, violin, here's all your notes and here's the stems and so you know what to do. But for percussionists, we have to tell them uh, what to hit, when to hit it, and what to hit it with, and how hard, and all that sort of stuff. And, and say, oh, and you're not going to go on this instrument anymore, now you have to go to this instrument and hit it with this, and this is when you hit it. So there's a lot of direction, stage direction, that you have to learn to effectively write percussion parts for these players to understand and be able to learn how to play. Because you could see she was playing a whole battery of of instruments back there and i'm sure it's in the score that uh you know when she has to move from one instrument to another um the singing the the verses with it being sort of completely out of the the meter of the groove and sort of uh speech like was an interesting choice to me and just the sheer um words themselves like in this last verse, did a booger bear come from somewhere out there just to land in the Andes? <laughs> Guacamole queen at the armadillo in Austin, Texas. <laughs> oh man, I have to dive a little more into Frank Zappa. This has been fun. I hope that you guys like this uh, or found it really interesting to follow along with because I'm, like I said, uh, uh, I am zapped now, so I, I have to dig a little bit deeper into what makes this guy tick because uh, um, I always, uh, when, when you find these unique musicians that have this sort of uh, off the beaten path perspective, and then they can back it up with music that's really engaging and performance and and skill, then they can bring it to life. It's it's really uh, a special special thing. So uh, look for some more Zappa down the road. What should I, what should I do next? Y'all let me know if you are big Zappa fans. Uh, what should we do next by him? Uh, because I have no idea. <laughs> this has been fun for episode 199. We've got a big uh, 200th episode coming up tomorrow. And we're almost to 100,000 subscribers. So uh, share the... the um, the channel with your friends. We got some cool stuff coming up and uh, just very thankful for all of you for tuning in. That's it for today and we will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.